You Ed Reed, so I would have feared Ed Reed. Yeah, if I saw Ed Reed in that C gap, absolutely. Ed no, Reed, he- boy, the best safety you ever seen, boy. I ain't doing <laughs> to Ed Reed. You know, I've only been watching football for a short amount of time. I am 24 years old, so in the scheme of things, I can't really say too much about all-time grades and who's the GOATs at certain positions. But I'll tell you one thing. I have never seen a safety in my lifetime that played quite like Ed Reed. He's debatably the best to ever do it, and there's no debate that he was an easy first ballot Hall of Famer. And so with the Hall of Fame game coming up, I figured, hey, why not make a video about Ed Reed? I think one of the things that made Ed Reed just so impactful over the years was just his insane awareness. He always knew where the ball was at any given moment. Like on this play, for example, it's zone coverage, and there's going to be a route running right over there. And so you might say, okay, well, this is going to have nothing to do with Ed Reed, right? Because he's playing back there. He's playing pretty far deep. No way he can come up and impact that route. And that part is true. He will not be able to run up and impact the route. And so watch how once the ball is snapped and the play develops, this receiver is going to get open. So, okay, you know, nothing Ed Reed could do there. He's pretty far deep. But watch Reed here and watch how he just looks up and realizes what's going on. He's even going to break in pretty early, which is actually going to be key since the ball is tipped. He ends up picking it off and returning it for a touchdown. It might seem like luck at first that the ball just happened to sort of go his way. However, it's not just luck at all. It definitely isn't. Well, I mean, I guess there's some luck to it because the ball did go- happen to go his way, but he made his own luck in a sense where he put himself in a position where he could get lucky. The ball always seemed to find Ed Reed, and it's not because Ed Reed is the luckiest player in NFL history by any means. It's because he puts himself in good positioning on pretty much every play. I mean, this is a guy who always seems to get an interception. I specifically remember a photo of Tom Brady on his forearm playbook. He had written on the playbook, find 20 on every play, because that's how much of an impact Ed Reed had in the game. I mean, throughout his career, he had 64 interceptions and 11 forced fumbles and 13 fumble recoveries. Despite never playing a snap on offense, Ed Reed ended his career with 1,590 total yards. To put that in perspective, in 1990, the Lions drafted Andre Ware with the 7th overall pick, and he had less yards than Ed Reed ended up having, despite the fact that he played quarterback and Ed Reed was a safety. Another remarkable stat was the fact that Ed Reed had 14 fumbles. No, I'm not talking about forced fumbles or fumble recoveries. I mean, this guy got the ball so many times, he ended up fumbling the ball 14 times. There's just so many stupid ridiculous stats about Ed Reed is insane, but honestly, his tape is even more fun to look at. And it's not just free safety. Everyone talks about him as the best free safety of all time, but this guy can play strong just as well as anybody who has ever played. He did it all, and this play will be an example, where first Philadelphia is going to have two double teams in the middle of that screen, and then each of you guys is going to get off that double team and eventually go out to block those two linebackers right there. And then every other Raven is going to be accounted for as well, as they all have one-on-one matchups right over there. However, there's one more Raven to look at, and that's going to be Ed Reed. Philadelphia is going to have a receiver try to run up and block Ed Reed, and that's just a bad idea. Watch how he easily blows by the receiver, shoots up the gap, and makes a tackle. I mean, that's just too easy for Ed Reed. I don't know what Philadelphia was thinking, trying to have a receiver run out to block him. Against most safeties that wouldn't realize as quickly, oh, hey, it's going to be a run in that direction, they wouldn't be able to get there as quick. But against Ed Reed, who seemingly always knows the play before receiving the snap, that play is just not going to work out. This play was another incredible example of Ed Reed being a great run stopper, where it's going to be a pitch to Trent Richardson to run up to the top half of the screen, and then Cleveland's also going to pull their right guard over, and the right guard is actually going to be the guy who's in charge of blocking Ed Reed, because when Ed Reed crashes in, then the right guard should be able to block him out of the way. It's a key block to make here, and as you see, the guard is getting himself in good position, and he's ready to make this block. But watch how Ed Reed blows this play up. I mean, that's just that's just ridiculous. I don't even know what else to say about that play, really, other than, hey, Ed Reed is good at football. Ed Reed is debatably the best strong safety ever, and he primarily played free safety. That's kind of where his talent level is at. And it also should be mentioned, I'm not picking out his total career highlights. All these plays are just from 2012. These aren't the best plays he's ever made. These are plays he would make every game, essentially. One other play that jumped out at me about Ed Reed was this one, where, again, this is the type of play where they're actually going to try to pick on Ed Reed. They're trying Ed Reed, basically, on this play. What's going to happen is Baltimore is playing a cover two zone, both an extra man and coverage, and the way this is going to work for Cleveland is they're going to send a tight end basically right there, which is going to try to get into the middle of the screen. And it's a good idea, because you know, Ed Reed, being the smart guy that he is, probably would run up and make sure that he's clogging up that area. And then you could send the Cleveland Brown closest to the sideline on the bottom half of the screen to run that route right there, and he could potentially get open towards the sideline. That's the way this play is supposed to work. 
and it's a good play call, and it's going to start off working out pretty well. I mean, if you see Ed Reed does what he typically does of making sure he's clogging up that gap in coverage, but now, of course, there's another problem developing, and it's the fact that that Cleveland Brown is completely wide open. So this is actually a great play call by Cleveland. They totally tried Ed Reed, and it totally worked. Well, except for one thing. Ed Reed isn't just a smart player. Ed Reed is a talented player as well. Watch how he breaks over to the bottom half of the screen, leaps up, and makes an incredible interception. I mean, again... You can't get more open than that. That guy is 20 yards open, and Ed Reed was still able to close the distance and find a way to pick the ball off. Not just knock it away, not just make a tackle. He got the interception out of that. I mean, it's just it's just unfair at that point. This play was another somewhat similar example where it's going to be a cover three zone this time, and Pittsburgh's going to try a very similar thing, where this time they're going to have their number three receiver on the bottom half of the screen basically run right there. So again, trying to get into that gap in coverage in between the linebackers and the safeties. And then they'll send a number two receiver deep, and really, this is probably ideal against cover two, because cover three, it's not going to work out as well. But it still does have a chance of working. That's where Ed Reed is, and if Ed Reed does go too far in to try to make sure he's taking away that middle of the screen, then maybe you could try to throw it over him and take a shot deep. And so once this ball is snapped and the play develops, you will notice that that Pittsburgh Steeler is stopping in front of Ed Reed, trying to get into that gap in coverage. However, you do have to give credit to the Baltimore Ravens linebackers and making sure they're taking away that area. But also look at Ed Reed. So, okay, he takes a couple of steps in because he does have to be wary of a potential she'll throw in that direction. And I think a lot of people would say, wait a second, you can't be taking that many steps in because look at the Pittsburgh player, he can now easily run by you. And most people are saying that because that would be the case. For most people, if you took that many steps in, the receiver would easily be able to get by you and easily be able to get a touchdown. But again, because of Reed's athleticism, he's able to easily take a couple steps back, leap up and make an incredible interception. And he even takes the ball out of the end zone, which at first you're saying, what are you doing? But then he finds a way to make that work. I mean, he's just, just ridiculous as a whole. There's also no shortage of just incredible Ed Reed stories over the years. One of my favorite stories, and again, who knows how true some of these stories are, sometimes they become more myth than fact, but one of my favorite stories was that when Ed Reed was playing a game that he purposely played a coverage a couple times wrong because he knew Peyton Manning would then watch it on tape, so that way later in the season when they played the Colts, then Peyton Manning would think that he was going to do the wrong thing and it led to an interception. And honestly, I could buy that. I could buy that's something that Ed Reed would actually do. But okay, enough about those just regular season games. We all knew he could be great, but what is true greatness? Well, true greatness is showing up when it mattered most, and Ed Reed absolutely did that in Super Bowl 47. For one thing, I had completely forgotten that he actually had a pick in that game. Here's how that all went down. It's going to be a cover three zone, and so Ed Reed is the one safety who's deep right now, and the way this is going to work for San Francisco is basically look at right there. There's Colin Kaepernick, a fullback, and a halfback in the game, so this could be a run in all several different types of directions, and then you have that route right over there, and you can simply just throw it over to linebackers and make a catch. So that's the way it's supposed to work. And granted, Baltimore actually does a pretty good job of getting themselves in position, as you see right here. That 49ers receiver isn't as open as he probably would have been had he been going against less talented linebackers, or just linebackers that didn't make as good of a read. But speaking of of Reed, that's where he is on the screen. And so again, no way he can try to break in and make this play at this point, because he's the one CD who's deep, it's just, it's not his responsibility to be going in that far, because it could really allow for someone to get wide open behind him, so he can't go too far in. But similar to that first play I showed you, notice how he still runs up and kind of gets in the way, so that when it is a high throw, he's able to pick it off. I mean, again, Ed Reed has made plenty of way more talented interceptions than that one. I mean, I think like the one I showed you in a cover two, when he was able to break all the way down to the bottom half of the screen, that one was way more talented. But I think this play kind of shows shows that doing the little things right can result in big results. Getting over to the top half of the screen and getting in position where he could potentially make a play, so that when it was a high throw, he was able to get the interception. Maybe only one out of every 500 times that it resulted in an interception, but hey, it resulted in an interception in the Super Bowl, so that makes it absolutely worth it. But honestly, I mean, you know, let's be fair here, the Baltimore Ravens did give up a decent amount of points to the San Francisco 49ers. They ended up giving up 29, so it's not like they were perfect. However, I think what Ed Reed really shined the most was in those final couple of plays. That's something that actually jumped out at me that I had completely forgotten about since watching the Super Bowl, which is how locked in he was in those final couple of plays. He absolutely knew what every play that the San Francisco 49ers were running. He just did. And watch, I'll show you with this play. So first, what San Francisco is going to do is send her back right over there in motion to the bottom half of the screen. But look at what Ed Reed is doing here. He's basically shouting to tell that Baltimore Raven, hey, make sure you get over here as soon as that guy gets in motion, because it is going to be a pass to him to the bottom half of the screen. He already knows what this play is. And it's not just him that he's trying to let know, it's also those two Baltimore Ravens on the bottom half of the screen. Watch how they're not communicating. They heard Ed Reed, and now they're letting each other know, okay, this is what the play is, it is going to be a play to the bottom half of the screen. And so Ed Reed is going to continue to shout out, hey, this is what the play is, and basically what the play is going to be is pretty simple. 
What San Francisco is going to do is have their two receivers on the bottom half of the screen. Basically, let's both run deep, which in hope will get those two Ravens to also follow them deep. And then Kaepernick can pass it to the back, who is in motion. He can just outrun the other player who's assigned to cover him, since he's closer to the top half of the screen than he is. And this can be a touchdown, and then the San Francisco 49ers can win the Super Bowl. That's the way this play is hopefully going to work for them. But because of the Ravens, and more specifically, Ed Reed realizing what this play is, and calling out to everybody, letting them know what the play is, look at what the two Baltimore Ravens defensive backs in the bottom half of the screen are going to do. Now granted, maybe they would have done this without Ed Reed, but they don't even focus on the two receivers they're in charge of covering. They run straight for the guy with the ball, and are able to make a tackle. So that was on third down, and now this play is going to be on fourth down. Basically, it's pretty clearly going to be man coverage on the bottom half of the screen, by the way, only Michael Crabtree and his assigned man are in that area. And Crabtree's going to be running a fade route right here. So this is the way this play is supposed to work for San Francisco. It's pretty simple. They're just going to try to hit this fade and see if they can get the touchdown. But what I find interesting about this play is look at where Ed Reed is. Right now, he's past the hash marks on the top half of the screen. That's for how far up he is to the top half of the screen. But kind of watch how he slowly moves over to the bottom half of the screen and kind of just bounces over to the hash marks on the bottom half of the screen. He kind of picked the perfect time to do this because if you look at Colin Kaepernick, at this point, he's looking down he's looking getting ready to snap this ball he's already decided what he's going to do he already knows he's going to try to hit michael crabtree and see what happens but watch how reed the second this ball was snapped breaks over and helps get into this play that wasn't supposed to happen. I think this should be mentioned that Ed Reed was not supposed to be in charge of coverage Crabtree in any way on this play. And in fact, if this was actually a running play, which it definitely could have been since there was a back in this game, that could have actually been really bad news. But Ed Reed knew what the play was. I know the play just didn't work out anyways. However, if this was a pass that Crabtree actually had a chance in catching, Ed Reed absolutely could have broken over and knocked that play away. He absolutely could have. It's just all-time great awareness. He knew what the play was and all of those plays, he was so locked in and it was a huge reason the Ravens were able to survive and win that Super Bowl. I mean, the reality is, Ed Reed's just one of the greatest players to ever play this game, not just safeties. He's one of the greatest players, period. He's the best safety that I've ever seen play this game. I mean, hands down. He has some ridiculous numbers, he has some ridiculous tape, and he showed up in the big moments. He's one of the best ever, and that's why he's now a Hall of Famer. <laughs>